Hey, right. everybody. This is the Turtle Reads Podcast. I am Clay, um, of course, uh, always here and with Melissa Diaz. Yo. Always fucking up the intros. And we have our <laughs> great, our, a great guest, the international superstar, Zach Amico, with us. Thanks yeah. for having me, guys. Of course. Uh, it's great to have you. And, of course, Patrick Eady. Oh, yeah. Sick intro, dude. <laughs> <laughs> international superstar. <laughs> Patrick Eady. I'm, and this I, guy with the mustache. Uh, I'm just too big of a gas digital fan. <laughs> no, I get it. No, I, I'm definitely the definition of and friends. That's what I am. <laughs> no, I'm a, you, you came through. Last time you came through, you were like the most apologetic person whenever you came through Creek because of the. Uh, I the first time I met you was at Skankfest. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. you were like, you know, pretty fucked up. Well, yeah, I was just having a good but time. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, you came over here, you were super apologetic, like, dude, I'm sorry about Skankfest. I'm like, that was the first time I met well, you. you. It do? was Skankfest. He was just he was just drunk and like sat by the green room door, was like talking my ear off, and I'm like, dude, it was Skankfest. That's like the worst. Wait, that's the worst thing I, you well, did. I, I hate cornering people and just like just talking their fucking ear off and like. You're in the middle of a story and you see them looking for ways out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I couldn't I, leave. Yeah, well, so that's <laughs> that's why I stopped drinking. Because yeah, I can't, yeah. the, I get drunk enough and all of a sudden I'll just turn to somebody and be like, you know, uh, we're still facing the threat of nuclear war. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just, it just, it's obnoxious. Just give him a like, Sean Ryan become, podcast. Yeah, and it gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> that's so just, why it's awesome being a dude. It is. When I drink with my best friend, we sit at a bar together and we look at the wall. Yeah. That's and my, amazing. I'll come home, my wife will be like, how's his girlfriend? How's his family? And I go, I don't fucking know. That's beautiful. She's like, you were with him for five hours. Like, we didn't talk. <laughs> we looked at a wall and drank. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I wish I could do Being that. Being a dude rules. You could just it shut does. your brain off and there could be nothing on. Yeah. It's, it's. You can tell being a dude rules because women have to go through a lot of effort to ch try to make it look like they rule and guys never have to say anything at all. Right. It's like it's like steak. It, it's like uh, whiskey. It's like cigar. You don't have to sell it. It just is. Goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, women are just like, well, the future is female. It's like, yeah, OK. Yeah, we figured out all the best <laughs> things and it's just what we do. I know. <laughs> But thank you for letting us be a part of it, you know. There's no reason hey. you can't order a tomahawk. Yeah, dude. Me? Yeah, you can, yeah. You can do it. What? Really? Get a tomahawk. <laughs> I, I'm sure most of you, if they saw you order and eat a tomahawk steak in its entirety. I have done that. Would be, it would add a point to whatever one to ten they had assigned you already. Do, do steroids I, I at do, the table. I do eat tomahawk steaks. Like, I'll eat a, oh, fuck yeah. I can eat a lot of it. Yeah, her main <laughs> thing is uh, her and Jean just eat steak and eggs mostly. That's yeah. Almost, well, you know, steak is, a, yeah, like once in a while. Yeah. It's a treat. Oh, but yeah. yeah. In a recession. Look at you, I dude. love He's kicking ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we steal it. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <sighs> okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're here on the podcast today talking about discussing the Joker comic by Brian Azzarello, one of the my favorite comics of all time. It's to me one the the quintessential like Joker comic. Um that the shot of him right there walking out of Arkham is fucking perfect. Yeah. Just uh, bombed at an open mic. Now I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Just bombed the open mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, it's uh it's such a wild, crazy, just like couple days ride in the life of the Joker. Like he gets a henchman, fucking makes the henchman drive for him as he just fucks up villains and random people. Two crazy massacres that he just goes on at one point. Uh, it's so fucking good. It's mm -hmm. basically how bad would it suck to be the Joker's friend? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the, the beginning is Joker gets out of Arkham. They send a new henchman. Joker takes a liking to him because he kind of proves himself right away. Yeah. And Joker's like, you're my driver now. And it's just like, you know how, um, uh, so there's a wrestling reference. You know, like the Freebirds had a bus driver who had a heart attack from trying to party with them for three days. <laughs> That's essentially that. It's like how being the Joker's henchman fucks your life up in every way, shape and form and how you're just more and more indebted to this guy and he's going to fuck shit up. Yeah. But what I love about it is it basically takes all the uh quintessential rogues gallery the batman villains and gives them real jobs and reasons they're like that so penguin owns uh, he's a nightclub owner he's a mafia nightclub owner yeah croc is just a big black guy yeah <laughs> that, a, i did find that interesting market. who runs a meat market yeah yeah and oh, yeah. then my favorite is riddler <laughs> yeah has ms yeah that's yeah. why he's that got strange. the big question mark cane yeah and it kind of makes him scarier yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He pulls up in the fucking the orange Mazda or whatever the fuck and with like all kinds of dudes with guns and is just like limping over but still got the crazy tattoo and yeah. shit. It's so dope. Uh if uh scroll through the 
image real quick. Um, yeah, the it's gonna take a while. The Riddler is a little bit later, but yeah, this is uh them going into Arkham. They did that same Crazy shot smile. in the uh, Pattinson movie. Yes, they oh, did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, one thing about great. that character though was that. Sorry, uh, I didn't take the time to. I'm sorry. <laughs> just looked at me like ah. oh okay all right well you guys just make out or whatever but what i was saying was Sorry. uh is that uh the the what is it robert Fro what was his name frost what was his name the guy that no, robert, the Pattinson. robert no, no, no oh johnny frost yeah, johnny yeah. frost johnny johnny uh johnny frost felt almost like the reader the reader it's himself or herself could actually live through this person right. like yeah, in a way like that guy was the reader like a fan of the joker yes. you know that got to be in the comic book you know because it was kind of talking about the psychology of like what it would how thrilling it was to be around this guy right and i feel i imagine that you know you're a fan of the joker that's kind of how you would feel as like a henchman you got you luck out you get to be kind of his right hand man for a while and that would be the conclusion is that you just get your fucking throat shot out and you just watch him fight the batman at yeah, the end i love that batman's barely in it but yeah, he has a presence too. in it yeah um and this is like to me like we, we were talking about the timeline with the movies this is influenced by the heath ledger joker i would say then i think they went too far with it with jared leto joker trying to make him kind of like this but also i have a theory about who that what I have a different theory about that. Please tell us. Okay. Tell yeah. us all. I think that that's not the Jared Leto Joker okay. is not the first Joker in that world. That makes a lot of sense. What do you mean? I think he's the second Joker. Yeah, because there are different Jokers. He he even in uh, the TV show Gotham, they they inquire that there's like, oh, a precursor to the Joker. Then there's a regular Joker. They're twins, and, though, in the show, right? There's something like that. Isn't it? They're, they're brothers. They're brothers. brothers. Oh. And uh, okay. they. Uh, Basically, the laughing ass that turned Joker into Joker, it's he the idea is he synthesizes it and then he makes another one later after he dies in the killing, not the killing joke. It's the one where the joke is where he shoots. Yeah. Oracle. Right? The, Whatever that chick. Uh, it's after he gets his face uh, re stitched on to his his oh, head. Yeah. That was a cool fucking look. Yeah. Um, he, he dies under Gotham and then supposedly a new Joker rises. So that's the second Joker. I wasn't aware of that plot. So what I think, and I think this would have been, had they gone further into that world, I think the reveal was going to be that Jared Leto was Jason Todd. Oh, fuck yeah. Ooh. Oh, interesting. And instead of killing Jason Todd, Joker, the ultimate revenge on Batman, turned Jason, because if you notice, he has a giant Robin tattoo. Yeah. Mm. Huh. And... Batman has rock Jason Todd's armor in the Batcave with Joker spray paint on it. Yeah. It also makes sense when That's you watch the Snyder good. Cut when they're on the same team. Mm -hmm. like what, and even if Superman was like the big bad, in what world would he team up with Joker? But if he's Todd, Jason I Todd. I think the big reveal no. that they were moving towards was that instead of becoming, or maybe he did become uh, Nightwing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's the Nightwing one. Because I, um, I've i always been adja more adjacent to comic books mm -hmm. than into it. And um, Is so I, I know a lot of the stories. So no, I the think, other one? No, the, Jason the guy Ty who, was Red Hood. Thank Jason, you. Yes, Red Jason Hood. Ty was Red Hood. Yeah. So Nightwing, Nightwing is the first yeah. Robin, yeah. right? He eventually the becomes first Robin. Nightwing. Yeah. Then Jason Ty would happen in the comics. They had Joker have Robin. Uh -huh. And they had a contest where you could vote. Should he kill yeah. Robin or let him live? This happened. This happened. The, like, yeah. in the comics. Voted on? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And they yeah. no, no, no. People, the real people voted. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's Fans voted, that's and they cool. voted to kill Robin. <laughs> and so he kills him with a crowbar. <laughs> yeah. I think they were gonna have that scene, and then have him turn instead of killing him. The big reveal was gonna be oh. that he's been Jason Todd, and that's yeah. why. He's so much younger than the Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah. Because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. Yeah. Because I think they were gearing up for old Batman. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Which is kind of how he was playing it. Like, the, I've been doing it this. It was Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, yeah. He was, that's ex the exact yeah. timeline that I think they were yeah. going for. Exactly. Right? Where he's more machine based. He's got the big car. Yeah. Well, yeah. even even when he fights fucking Superman, he's got the fucking me mech suit and all those. Yeah, he's got, yeah. And at that point, to Batman's, me, that's late era Batman for sure. He's talking about taking okay. motherfuckers out at that point. Yeah. He's done. And yeah, he's like, hell yeah. Okay, retirement plan. Yeah, that would have been dope. I, I, man, I think it would have made sense. Yeah, it would have made sense, and honestly, that would have been a good. <sighs> that's better. I don't. I, 
that's a I didn't way better. Really like the Jared Leto Joker, but that would have that would have it like, would have made it make sense. It would have made Supposedly it make sense, and it would have it would have fucking would it have made it make sense because the Jared Leto Joker is so different yes. from the other yeah. one. Okay, I don't know much about the Jared Leto Joker. Leto Joker. It's so like if Machine Gun Kelly was a Joker. I saw the picture Joker. though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw. Yeah, that's, Gen, Gen Z Joker. <laughs> yeah, Gen Z. <laughs> supposedly, that, that's super mid for real. For real, yeah. Yeah. slay queen. Slay. Yeah, but there's there's a forty minutes supposedly cut from Suicide Squad. There's supposed to be an air cut out there somewhere. Because, like, you know, Leto did all kinds of crazy shit on the set. He's giving dead birds to people and just doing crazy shit that nobody yeah, liked. Yeah. As then, an actor, like, yeah. for his method. Well, he was doing, like, yo, I'm going to get Dick. real into this character. Yeah. But then when the, you, you cut 40 minutes of your shit and he just comes off as kind of a tool. I think he, get, he has, yeah. like, what, three minutes in the third act? I think he was supposed to be the big bad of the movie, but yeah, then they like shoved actors the, need to stop trying to have a personality, you know? Because well, whenever they try to go too far, it's just, it's like whenever they try to tell a joke. It's like they can't. It's like, just go be somebody else. And stay out of he everybody else's cult. way. I mean, he runs a cult. Yeah, he does. does he? He, yeah. Runs he runs a cult. Jared now. Leto runs a cult. Yeah, 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 he runs an island cult. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're fans of his band, and he, it's like a very expensive trip where you go like meditate with him and shit on an island. Get the fuck. Dude, I hate actors. I swear to God. They uh -huh. need to be kept in cages and only let out when they just perform a role and then put back in the cage. <laughs> like, just keep it. them in like actors' kennels. Well, there's, actors I, I feel kennels. Like there's two schools of actors. You either get the guy that's method. And he's unbearable. Yeah. Or you get like De Niro, who's just it's like and I've heard this term before. It's like meeting a shoe. Yeah. Like there's just <laughs> a blank slate. But that's why but he's that's so an good. actor who embraces who they really are. That's what I'm saying. Like whatever, whatever that is, that's a real actor. They're yeah. empty. And that's why they like acting. Right. Uh, they, well, that's why they're so they good, because they're never somebody. caught up. As who they are. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But you have to know who you are. And I think the, the method ones, are, they become obnoxious because they don't realize that they have, there's nothing inside of them, you know? Like that's, they just kind of go on the assumption that there is. And then they retire and they become politicians and it's the same kind of person. That's why they're, that's, they're just kind of the light and dark of the same well, there's a personality. Saying politics is show business for ugly people. It yeah. is. So when you get too old and ugly, you just go and you run for office. Right. So yeah. it, it's like if you don't like politicians, you shouldn't like actors. That's what I'm trying to say. They're the same people. Yeah, so. I can't imagine having to hang out around somebody and call them their character name. Yeah. Yuck. Yeah. yeah. Jared, like, I mean, you. Joker, Fuck. can you pass me the yeah. latte? <laughs> Especially somebody trying to be the Joker. Hey, and they're Rocky. trying to just leave dead birds around and, and yeah. just be that. Yeah, he, he apparently sent rats to other like castmates and shit i feel like if somebody tried that shit with you you would you would scare the shit out of them somehow i would probably do something back to them what yeah. would you yeah. do i i would find something evil to do them yeah yeah i, I i'm no I like, stranger i love it i love your aesthetic and i like how that you embrace uh, embraced well, okay. i do that too nice. yeah, well, that's good, good we're for all embraced on the pod <laughs> it's called embraced double d pod dude. Embrested. some joker uh, titties on the screen dude <laughs> throw them up there we go <laughs> that's oh, good enough yeah there you go oh fuck yeah somebody flayed alive yeah that was a cool scene that was a great so that's, scene he goes to the strip club he owns where Harley's a dancer there. Yep. And then of is course. that the who is it that he flays? Monty. Yeah. The okay. guy who sent Johnny Frost to pick him up and yeah. uh, was supposed to be taking care of his business while he's gone and uh, kind of just took a whole bunch of money from him. Yeah. yeah. And Dude, so yeah, leaving he, the face on, but yeah. taking the rest of it, that's And then he, he smacks him on the ass with a dollar bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then the whole idea that it's a strip club. Yeah. And he literally stripped his skin pun. off and threw him oh, on yeah. the stage. Yeah. Oh, dude, this guy's a one-liner comic. This is brutality. <laughs> Have you ever heard of um, Pelts, the mm -hmm. Dario Argento uh, short? Uh-uh. No. no. It was on a, a show called uh, Masters of Horror, where it was, it was on Showtime, NBC. Yeah. Or it was Showtime? Yeah. yeah. NBC, I think it might have ran it as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a different director, and they did horror like one hour. Is hours. that the Clive Barker one? It's Argento's. Argento? It's called Pelts. Argento. And it's um, a guy that runs a fur factory. Uh, and they he buys all these raccoon furs that, that you find out are from a witch's property. And they're all cursed. So everyone that touches the fur kills themselves. But in like brutal way. Like the lady who's his uh, uh, seamstress sews her own nose and mouth shut. Oh, oh shit. shit. Another guy puts his face in a bear trap. But the guy that runs the factory is Meatloaf. Oh, <laughs> shit. And he's obsessed with this stripper, and he keeps bringing her furs to try and fuck her. And she won't. And then he finally brings her the raccoon fur, and she falls in love with it and has sex with him. And then he goes to the bathroom and cuts his torso off and skins himself alive. And it's just Meatloaf with no skin 
chasing the stripper around, Holy holding shit. his skin, going, I made you another one. That's it's beautiful. So <laughs> and this good. reminded me of that a lot. Oh, Damn. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Do, do anything for love. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite overall movie Joker? Yeah. Ooh. Um, I would have to say Heath Ledger. Whenever I was young, whenever I saw that movie mm -hmm. and like the, the whole like, uh, oh, do you know how I got this scars and shit? And it was so perfectly played and just creepy, but intimidating. And that that. Yeah, Heath Ledger Joker to me was like his, his one of the His body language is also fucking yeah. immaculate. And it, it's Tom Waits. Like, have you seen that interview with Tom Waits where he's oh, basically yeah, yeah. the Joker? Yeah, it, it, he he. I feel like he did, and I'm I'm a big Tom Waits fan too. So like having that that kind of just uh, very sly, like mm -hmm. oh yeah, like I feel like he's Tom Waits the same way Patrick Bateman is Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's funny you mentioned that because Christian Bale just his. Bateman as Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah, and, and he is yeah. kind of Batemany. So in the American Psycho book, Tom Cruise lives in Patrick Bateman's building. Really, and he talks oh, about okay. how he's he admires him. Watch the Tom Cruise jumping on the couch on Oprah, and then watch Patrick Bateman in the movie. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Huh. Oh, hilarious! Wow. <laughs> Do you guys have a favorite Joker? Uh, I like Jack Nicholson. That was a good. <laughs> I like it, but he's too Jack Nicholson. I know yeah. he's Jack from The Shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. You have a favorite Joker? So I, I was, I like Nicholson a little bit more because I like that. I, I like the Nicholson as Joker because yeah. it's fucking perfect. Just menacing Kubrick stare, fucking way they get a load of me. Because Ledger, I thought was, I, I like the chaos of it all, and that was awesome. But I thought Nicholson took more glee in like concentrated violence, right? It's like, oh, this is gonna happen, and that's gonna happen, and also it was like the. You see the origin story of it all. You see him not fucked up. Then you see him get fucked up. Prince is writing the soundtrack. He's fucking up paintings. Yeah. I mean, that was all pretty tight. Yeah. The Those old school, the like the Batman Beyond or uh, the Val Batman. Kilmer. Okay. Batman Well, movies. fucking Jim Carrey is playing the Joker as the Riddler. The Riddler. Yeah, yeah, he is yeah. doing Joker. Yeah. 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 So I get a lot of shit for my favorite Joker. Who's your favorite Joker? Mark Hamill. Okay. Which one was that one? It's no, he's the animated. animated. Yeah. The, oh, the animated one. Yeah. And okay. in the Dark Knight games. Okay. Okay. That's the Arkham Asylum yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then my other favorite Joker, this is a this is a weird pull. It's I believe his name is Stephen Koenig. Uh, he's the son of Walter Koenig, Chekhov from Star Trek. Okay. Uh, he played uh, what was the sitcom with the the wacky neighbor named Boner? <laughs> you know what, what I'm talking about? What is that? Wait a minute. Boner. Uh, mm. Name Boner? Are you serious? Yeah, go type it in. I'm sure, you get something good. Sitcom with <laughs> wacky name. Sitcom boner. boner. Yeah, why not? You know, he was like that was his name. Yeah, if his uh, name is Boner, you can find it. Boner. Uh, Did, boner character. It's just me. Yeah, once you once <laughs> no. you got it, it's Google just asking me if I want to take a safety it results. It's growing off. pains. Oh, uh, funny oh, enough. Okay. okay. Uh, so he played the Joker in a fan film. Oh. called uh, Batman Dead End. And what Batman Dead End was, it was a essentially a, a call a, a, a business card for this group that was putting together suits. Uh, they were special effects guys. So instead of doing a reel, they did uh, it's Batman versus Alien versus Predator. Oh, fuck yeah. Where they made everything. They shot it themselves. And the beginning of it is Batman cornering the Joker. And it's Joker with the long Harlequin nose. Oh, okay. And he's really creepy. And he's really good. And then he killed himself after. So another of the Joker curse. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah. Okay. If you remember, he killed. He hung himself in a park and check off his dad, Walter Koenig, saw the body live on the news. Oh. Whoa. Gets the call and on the news sees his son hanging in the park. That's fucked. Uh, but yeah, he's a super. So basically, the beginning it's Batman and Joker having their like you know this is I'm bringing you in conversation, and then you just see a xenomorph eat Joker. So oh. then it's Batman versus Alien for like a good five minutes. Alien's about to win, and then you see the three Predator dots, and that <laughs> alien dies. Then it becomes Batman Predator, and then the end is Batman in the middle, and a team of Predators and a whole shitload of xenomorphs on either side. It ends. Fuck yeah. It's about 15 minutes. It's perfect. Okay. 
That sounds cool. You watch it on YouTube, Batman Dead End. Okay. Batman Dead End. Have you was s- this ever a comic book? Because I almost feel like yes, I, there has been Batman. I feel versus, like I've seen that. There's yeah. been Batman versus Alien, Batman versus Predator. Okay, that's yeah. all happened. All right. Have cool. you seen that new uh, um, independent project Joker movie coming out? It, oh yeah, yeah. What do I've you think of it. that? It's not, isn't it like it's a transgender person who wanted to make like a. a Oh, a, f- a fanfic is that on YouTube? Movie. It's, it's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, right? it's gonna be on YouTube. A trans Joker makes a lot of sense, right? Come on now, it's all over the place, both worlds, right? Joker with tits, yeah, possibly, uh-huh. but do the whatever. Clips, I, I, I saw like. Want to know how I got the scar? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> post off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, another one of my favorite Jokers is from Flashpoint. Okay, yeah. are you familiar with? <laughs> so it's an alternative reality where. Um, the night Bruce's parents died, they accidentally shot Bruce. Okay. So, but he's dead. So they Bruce they kill Bruce now. Wayne. Hmm. Thomas Wayne becomes Batman. His okay. dad. Yeah, yeah. And then Martha Wayne is holding Bruce's dead body in the rain, and she's covered in blood, and she goes like this, and it's the smile, and Martha yeah. Wayne is the Joker. What? Yeah. All right. And it's it's a pretty cool yeah. alternate reality. Mm. Yeah, they tried to do that in the Flash movie because it was Flashpoint Paradox without yeah. any of the meat behind it. That would have been fucking sick if they did that. Yeah. Does his mom make a good Joker? Or yeah, what? yeah, she's super scary. She's just a crazy bitch. Yeah, yeah. Well, even the Batman in that universe is fucking super brutal too. Okay, he's fucking yeah. He people. straight up uses a gun and shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, have you ever seen uh, Hyena? Yeah. So there was a uh, when how old are you? I'm 31. Okay, well, I'm I'm a little older than you, but when I was a kid, they did DC versus Marvel, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. had a bunch of battles and people. Of the same people could write in and vote who they thought were going to win. Crazy, but then in the comics, they basically it was that they were two universes that were crashing into each other, oh, yeah. and everyone was basically there could only be one of each person. Oh, okay. So everybody had a battle for the fate of which universe was going to survive. <laughs> so then they decide to fix it by imploding them. And everyone uh, combines. So oh, okay. uh, uh, Captain America and Superman become Super Soldier. Huh. Uh, Batman and Wolverine become the Dark, Dark Claw. Claw. Yeah, and was- his main enemy is Hyena, who's Sabretooth Joker. Fuck. Whoa. I so mean- it's a giant. Imagine Sabretooth with Joker's face, yeah. but with the Hyena spots. And that's why he's laughing all the time. because That's hyena. pretty cool. Yeah. And it's a really cool villain. What happened to that villain? I haven't seen that guy. They, it was only, it it was was only in Amalgam Comics. It was yeah. it was, they're bringing it back. They're, um, they're doing a re-release of it this year. Yeah. Nice. But there was a bunch of cool villains in that. There was uh, Bizarro Carnage. Fuck. Um, yeah. Who's that guy? Uh, it was Bizarro, Superman's uh, guy, and Carnage from uh, Spider Man. What do he look like? What do he end up looking like? Uh, being uh, like, like, like a zombie. Yeah, zombie. like was it a Carnage with a cape. Like a like okay. a, a zombie Carnage. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> zombie Carnage. Um, right. Sick metal name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole the whole names. series is a really really good run. Uh, there's Superboy, Spider Man, um, Storm, and Wonder Woman become one, like the Amazonian yeah. or something. It's very very good. Have you? They, they kind of did that with uh, the Dark Metal series. Yeah, you Dark Knight's Metal. Like, you, like, like did the, you read that? Yeah. Yeah. That I, Batman Who Laughs is pretty fucking sick. It, I like that. That's so insane. It's like a Todd McFarlane wrote, I mean, like fucking Batman. Yeah, in with a bunch of little Robins is on, on leashes fucking. Mm-hmm. Also, just Joker being Batman what? and trying to become God is very fucking cool. Right yeah. Now. That's pretty tight. He that that Robins one Robins on leashes? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Robins are like are mutants. minions. Yeah. yeah. The uh in Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, basically, a, a god from the underworld is trying to take over with uh, these nth metal shit, uh, trying to collect them all. And, and um, yeah, he goes to different universes and he corrupts different Batman, right? So like, mm-hmm. there's like a Batman Aquaman sl- character. There's a Batman Superman guy that he corrupts, and then they all kind of go on the main Earth timeline, and start fucking shit up. And one of them is uh, the Joker, Batman, a uh, Batman Joker. It's called the He Who Laughs. The yeah, Batman, Batman Who Laughs. laughs. The Batman yeah. Who Laughs, and he has a bunch of little like uh, cannibalistic Robins on leashes that he 
like lets loose he's on like a cenobite kind of uh, from fucking hellraiser as batman it's he's like a, it's like a, a cenobite was a pedophile seems like <laughs> i mean they, they probably wanted the same yeah. cinephile as yeah. <laughs> cinephile well yeah, yeah. uh well, well yeah. the more you read about clive barker <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i love clive barker um i was a big <laughs> clive barker uh fan when i was a kid growing up i used to steal my brother's clive barker books and just read all about just gay blood blood average all the great shit and then um then I just uh, grew up and looked back at things like Nightbreed, like the movie and stuff, and just realized that he was just talking about being gay in like the 80s club scene. Yeah. And just kind of <laughs> trying to, you know. <laughs> so I, I bring up on, on my podcast all the time how gay horror is. Yeah. And they're like, what? No, what's horror? I'm like, I don't know. You like Hellraiser? That's yeah. gay SM porn. Yeah. And then when you find out some other possible facts about Clive Barker, the whole reason blood might have to do with something. Yeah. Well, horror is like a refuge for people who are afraid of themselves. Does that make sense? So I have this theory that horror movies of each uh, generation reflect what we're scared of. Yeah, but when you identify as the thing that people are scared of, like being yeah. gay, horror becomes like you embrace it, right? You you become attracted to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you don't know maybe why at first because you're a kid, but you just give into it because it, it it's delicious, right? It feels good. It's dark. And delicious. it's, it's, it's like gay. shadow. And that's but that's what horror feels like when you're into it, right? Well, well, it, it feels like velvety and, and like like shadow safety, you know? But like, I'm saying it's also a mere reflection of what we're. So yeah. look at um zombies. Yeah. So Night of the Living Dead era. Well, yeah, there's 60s, the 60s, 70s. Yeah. How does a zombie infection spread? Bite. Like a mushroom club. No, they don't bite. You don't Wait, get which, it from that. Which one? Night of Living Dead. Yeah. No, uh -huh. a, uh, a satellite goes over Earth and all the dead bodies start to rise. Mm -hmm. You don't get it from getting bitten. Okay. In that. Yeah, it's like people being afraid of 5G now. And it now. spreads <laughs> like a mushroom cloud. Right. Then in the 80s and 90s, we got the saliva blood thing. Mm-hmm. I have an idea where that comes from. Well, fear of uh, AIDS. like AIDS yes. and well, just the spread of uh, disease. disease. Well, it, it's like the world's getting more globalized. An AIDS allegory. Yeah. yeah. Then towards more now, zombie movies spread like an infection. Which one? Like World War Z. World War Z. Well, you skipped one, though. What? You skipped the time when they were doing the 28 Days Later. Yeah. And that one, actually, I've been thinking about that lately because I don't think we understood what that what we were expressing that we were afraid of in that one in that paradigm of, of Dude, fast zombie. zombies that's not an allegory nah, but it's scary. like it's it's fast mobs of violent people they're not sure. even technically zombies right yeah and they're I think, infected with the rage yeah, yeah and i think that that actually was our sort of sub like collective subconscious uh sort mob, of mob seeing mentality like having a for like yeah foreseeing the kind of mob mentality shit that we see now that like makes when sense you, yeah and, and then more recently there's this movie the sadness and a bunch of zombie movies where yeah. it's covid yeah. Is it you really? get it. You start to get sick, and then you become a zombie. Yeah. So I think it always, or like to me, the definitive horror movie of my teenage early twenties. Yeah. Is Cloverfield. Hmm. Is it Cloverfield okay. is the nine eleven horror movie? It is. Yeah, absolutely. Watch it again. Yeah. It's undeniable. No, no, it's, I, it's I, a nine eleven. I noticed movie. that when I yeah. saw it. I, w I was yeah. Yeah, that was the first like shaky cam following and shit. I watched that with my parents whenever I was young, and I'm like, it. it it was right around the time of 9-11 and shit, and that was for sure like a... No, it was about uh, well, five years after. Yeah, 2006. The, the, oh, really? The camera yeah. work at the time Yeah, I was in college when it came out. Okay. Yeah. I was pretty young. But yeah, I, I remember seeing that, and I was like, oh, I thought, okay. I thought that came out so, after Paranormal Activity, because I was, I was 18 when Paranormal Activity came out, and that was the one that really fucked me up, at least because I thought it was real at the time. I was 18. Paranormal. When did that come out? What year? 2007 or eight. Paranormal is kind of... I'm that not. One. That one is kind of like old, old school that, that's horror. All, that's also it's kind of like when uh, that, that's like a movie you have vampires. to see in theaters. You have well, to see a movie in theaters because of the sound 2009. design. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, 2009. 2009. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the paranoia one. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have insight into that one, but I feel like that one, which is kind of more just like the the old school, like we have souls that are under threat of the devil kind of horror. Like well, I, I how thought, vampires used to be depicted before they switched into like sexy, glittery. I guess, but I thought it was more so just like paranormal mannequins. shit happening out of nowhere and just fucking up your life. I mean, it's like, that's like, it's an unexplained event. Like any bad things happen to good people. Well, kind yeah, of thing. But that's the realm of, you know, yeah. pretty much like really bare bones, basic superstition, like yeah. ignorance and superstition. I love that shit. And that's, though. that's also why it's so course, scary. We all, love, all horror is great. They all yeah. have great. I think paranormal activities, the other side of like how, every movie had texting and webcams 
Paranormal Activity is the first time where everybody had access to home security. Right, right. Yeah. Footage. So it's the idea of everyone for the first time going, Seeing. I can see what happens in my house while I'm asleep. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. That makes sense. Because before that, just rich people had that. Yeah. But now everybody's kind of can access like nanny cams and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, and suddenly you see something. Yeah. 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 We were just going to make porn, but now we're making a ghost movie. <laughs> yeah, we can make ghost porn, you know, whatever. Ghost porn. Nah, that was that was Ghostbusters. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, what were all of yours uh, favorite horror genres growing up? I was a big slasher fan. I got fucking Freddy, J Jason, all that stuff. Then I got, I remember the first time I saw Hellraiser. That was the first time I got kind of like, I felt dirty for watching the movie. I was yeah. like nine. I was like, oh, fuck. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> you Start questioning but, your sexuality. Oh, yeah. I was like, Mom, why do I feel this way? <laughs> this British guy <laughs> made me feel feelings. But now, Freddy was my favorite because it was, it was also more comedic. I mean, I, once you got past like, like Freddy's Dead is my favorite one. He's got the glove. He's like, all oh, these graphics are great. I don't know. It was more of like an anti-hero thing, but that's what I like. Freddy, which which one did you say? Did Freddy's you like? Dead, the sixth one, not not New the Nightmare, sixth one. but it's uh, the one. I think it starts off with the Wizard of Oz thing. You don't like Dream it's Warriors? It. Dream Warriors, I like Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors, Warriors a lot. is the best one. Yeah, yeah. it is. I did Dokken, fucking Dokken yeah. wrote a song. But as far as just like movies, I like a lot. Like I like Jason X too, even though it's kind of shitty. But I just liked stupid fucking B movie s kind of like sci yeah. movies that were on the Sci Fi Channel. I really like Jason X as well. Yeah, yeah. Jason X is so like uh, super. Scream was the movie that kind of changed me to be a, like. A big time horror fan. Scream, really? Yeah, That's it's also got a great sense yeah. of humor in that movie too. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. Scream is, is, I think, Scream is as perfect as a horror movie gets. Yeah. Well, there are, there's another movie around that time too, Event Horizon. It's basically Event Horizon. Horizon. Event Horizon's Horizon's great. Well, Event favorite. Horizon yeah. is part. So there's a thing that some people say that um, it's in the Hellraiser universe, right? spaceship movies are haunted house movies. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. For sure. Same trope, same everything. Yeah. Just they're on a spaceship instead of a house. But it's all the same beats. Event Horizon is the shining in space. But okay. also with the Hellraiser hell idea. Yeah. Hmm. And that would have been a much better movie, but Titanic fucked it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Titanic was supposed to come out. Titanic got delayed. The guy wasn't done making Event Horizon yet, and they rushed him to finish oh, it. Oh, man, that To sucks. take the spot of Titanic. Yeah. And he had to cut like 30 minutes of gore that then never got that fixed. Sucks. Yeah, the original that, cut that, got fucked up. Conceptually, that movie was great. The original cut had like real porn stars fucking each other. In that big orgy scene? Yeah, it was like a real big, like they shot an orgy. Yeah. Where everyone's like skinned alive and shit. That's so good. See, that's the kind of method acting that I like. You know? <laughs> that's what you gotta really dedicate your time to. Have you ever seen the, the orgy scene in uh, Society? Yes. The shunting that's, scene? That's one of my favorite movies. Excellent. It's such a crazy movie. <laughs> where the guys uh, the guy comes out of his wife's asshole mm -hmm. and he's like what are you doing here son yeah and then they fight i love that have you guys seen that movie no but i've learned about it now yeah <laughs> no that's such a great movie sounds crazy joker and ass play on a podcast this is <laughs> this isn't even this is beyond ass play i don't even know what to call it <laughs> beyond <laughs> ass play the podcast yeah. that's sick yeah batman it, beyond ass play. justin can you pull up a picture of that because that's kind of yeah, the just iconic picture society shunting s-h-u-n-t-i-n-g <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I found that movie pretty late. Shunting too. GIF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, uh, <laughs> there you go. That guy. Oh, there there you I've go. seen that before. So that's an exactly, and it's from that movie. No, it's, it's like in the third row. It kind of in the middle. You see that guy's face between the two butt right. cheeks. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know their butt cheeks because you need to know the plot. But he, wow. this is a man who's coming out of a woman's body. They're having sex. Nice, dude. It's consensual. They're both. Um, I don't even know what they are. They're, they're all mutating into each other. Yeah, they're sort of hmm. an organism that can, yeah, mutate in and out of each other at will. Fuck yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's wild. It's it's a it's a great. It's a very good movie. Yeah, I don't Dude, know. It's like it's like how Tom Savini dreams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have it's, you have y'all ever seen? Uh, this reminds me of uh, uh, like one of the first episodes of American Gods. Have you watched that? No, I saw familiar. I saw like, the first few episodes of that. Dude, uh, they have a, a god uh, Bilquis who she's a, a African goddess of fertility. She literally sucks people into her vagina to to uh, like collect their life force and shit. So she's just fucking this dude and slowly just engulfing her him in her vagina. Yeah, very fucking. Freudian. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a like great scene. Every guy's secret fear, you know, that this thing will suck me up. never come out of it again. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever I was reading it back, whenever I was, I was like, super, I was in high school, I was reading it and it's just like she engulfs him in her vulva. And I'm like, that's wild thing to <laughs> they write. They misspell vulva? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just Swedish car as a pussy. Hell yeah. I, mean. I think it's hilarious to have the same fear of a chick as you would like the deep end of a pool, you know, as a five-year-old. <laughs> like, as long oh, as I can there. touch one of the walls, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right there, I was looking for virgins. Yeah. I'm treading. Fuck. Yeah. How long? Get How long do I have to tread? Here. And black guys are afraid to jump in head first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Good about uh, you. What's your favorite horror? I'm I'm I was never like that big in the horror too much, but I did I did love the B horror movies like uh Evil Bong. Me and my homies watch all of the Evil Bong movies. They're so fucking funny. Oh, yeah. Um like all the all those is it uh New Moon or Full Moon. Full Moon, yeah. Uh, we we went through like almost the entire Full Moon catalog of watching all that shit. That was super. I, I like those. Do you guys remember that haunted house movie? It was called like Rose or something like Rose that. Rose Red. Rose Red. Yeah, Stephen okay, King look, I was extremely high around the time that I started watching that movie, and I stayed high for like five years, and I would rewatch it. So, can you tell me, as people who have probably watched it not high, is that a good movie? Because I I remember it being. I a saw good it movie. young. My dad was out of town. I watched it alone, but I remember, the imagery was fucking really. It was crazy, right? Yeah, because there was that Shining movie that was like also that that, that they remade for TV. Did you see? I would have to rewatch it. Okay, yeah. all right. There's scenes from that scenes. movie that like just stay in my fucking head. Me too. But like, because the same thing with the Shining TV movie, like the last thirty minutes, like his face changes and he has like the fucking sledgehammer. I don't remember anything, but like just his face and that, like yeah. I'm fucking ABC. Oh, remember Poltergeist? Yeah, fuck yeah. I feel like Poltergeist doesn't get mentioned enough. So Poltergeist anymore. is actually based off an event in Crosby, Texas. They moved all all the gravestones in this graveyard and they built a fucking suburb on top uh, of it. Road trip, everybody. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> not a whole lot in Crosby, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you buried, the, you, you moved the cemetery, but you didn't move the bodies. God damn you! Seems like a great plan on paper. Like, if we're playing this out as far as overhead goes, let's just move these fucking gravestones, dude. <laughs> yeah. Incompetence always, like, you can get outraged about it when you're not doing it. But when you do it, it's like, I mean, come on. You know, so what guys, else would you do? I think Poulter do guys doesn't get mentioned because of how sad the situation is. With Why? The, with, the, with the girl? With the girl? Well, I mean, a bunch of people, like, a lot of Poulter guys people die. Isn't that like a they curse? Really? What, yeah. do you know? They call it a pol the Poulter guys curse. But I know one of the actresses from the first, this, the girl from it got killed by her boyfriend. The, the older girl. Okay. Uh, the priest died. The lady died. And then Heather O'Rourke died before I think the third one came out. Okay. And depending on what conspiracy theorist you ask. <laughs> uh, what do you think? When a child dies of impacted bowels. Okay. Ooh. It is not necessarily uh, a health problem. Yeah, it's not just constipation. And when you look at... So if you go deep, I'm, I'm personally not a subscriber of this theory. Okay. What is the theory, though? There's, have you heard of the red shoes? Uh, like the story? What are you talking about? There's a thing that certain Illuminati wear red shoes and they're made out of the skin of children. Hmm. Why? Okay. And Steven Spielberg found Heather O'Rourke like eating lunch with her mom and was like, I need to put you in movies. Heather O'Rourke was supposedly killed during a ritual. Okay. Huh. And then they later said she was sick. Um, there's been a lot of actors that say she was definitely abused. I mean, uh, it's, it's. I mean, based on all the stuff that's coming out now, I mean, that's not exactly yeah. like just out of the question. There's a lot of crazy shit that seems to have been happening the whole time. And, and yeah, Spielberg's one of like the the big ones that they say is never going to get taken down. Yeah. He's also supposedly the person Corey Feldman won't name. Oh, I get it. Because I almost feel like things like that Nickelodeon documentary, it's almost a way to uh, throw the lower level ones just at the public. Well, it's while also like the higher level pedos. Just Dan, continue. Dan Schneider also, there's no criminal charges. Yeah. Like, basically, a lot of those guys are relaunching their careers based off that documentary. It's almost yeah. like, hey, remember this awful sexual assault? Well, now we're going to make a documentary about it, make money on it, and then kind of reintroduce it. But well, nobody's really going to fucking. Plus, like Dan Schneider, like. His biggest crime really is that he's a fucking idiot who doesn't know how to talk to kids. He seems like, yeah, he seems like, he <laughs> seems like, like an creep. asshole. Yeah. yeah. Asshole a creep, creep and an asshole. Yeah. More, it doesn't seem like there's any documents of him really yeah. doing anything touching like anybody. A lot of it was, was like middle-aged HR lady type of women just yeah. kind of like, and then he didn't say good morning. He but didn't take my He never said good morning once. I mean, you know who hasn't said a goddamn word about Dan Schneider? Keenan. He yeah. doesn't say shit about nobody, and that's Keenan, extremely Keenan, suspicious to Keenan me. Keenan knows something, or Keenan was given a great deal one day. Yeah. That yeah. motherfucker's been on TV since I'm five. I know. 
I've I've noted that. And and, he's, and he ain't got shit he, to say about says, nobody. Yeah, he never says anything. Very tight lipped. If in fact, if you think of Keenan in your head right now, do you even think of him really talking? Or him doing that like tight lip smile thing that yeah. he does, right? It's always he that. He keeps his fucking mouth shut. He's got that, yeah, he's got that NDA and smile. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure he's got <laughs> some some stories and some opinions. I think so too. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully he'll write something before even when, he dies. Like, what was it? Lori Beth Dinberg or whatever, the, the chubby girl from all that was like, and then Dan Schneider tried to fuck me. And you're like, yeah. And she's like, how old are you? She's like 20. And you're like, ah, oh, well. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he's throwing you one, lady. Yeah. <laughs> Unsavory. But you want to get on Nick Unsa- and I? Yes. yes. Unsavory, sure. 100%. <laughs> yeah. But a criminal? Yeah. I doubt it. No. Yeah. The no. foot shaped pool? Questionable. Yeah. <laughs> the feet stuff is weird. Like, But he, that was also Nickelodeon's logo. Yeah. I think he was a Didn't foot. they change yeah. it at, like during Dan Schneider's run? They changed it. But so he could technically say, oh, I just had the Nickelodeon logo made into my pool. Yeah. yeah. I'm just really attracted to the Nickelodeon logo. I yeah. But he had off. the whole thing where he had, uh, uh, during the Ike Harley shit, he had kids send in pictures of their feet. Yeah, he would tweet, were, like, Foot Friday, send in yeah. pictures of your feet. That was it, a thing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't yeah. know. I don't know what to think of it because I remember back then, and it's not like that we didn't have the culture that, uh, that we had now of uh, basically, like, pedophile panic and, like, sexy feet though. shit. It was way right? more trust in show business than But the also, too. people's heads weren't there. Like, you, it, it takes us now, looking back, to look at the green goo going down on some kid and going, Ugh, you know? Nobody was thinking that back yeah. then. Nobody was... Nobody was uh, thinking of cum. just like, oh, they're getting Maybe slimed. Yeah, people. cool. I yeah. think Dan Schneider at the end of the day, and I'm not an apologist in any way, shape, yeah, or Yeah, that's form. the thing. This is not my restore the Schneider version. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I get it. Yeah. The Schneider cut. Uh, yeah, I also don't. Yeah. yeah. I think his crime is that he's extremely autistic and doesn't know how to act around different groups of people. And just so like, if I do a movie where I'm naked, I've done a movie where I've gotten naked, I get messages from very clearly autistic dudes who are like, are there any other movies you're naked in? Because I think it was really funny. <laughs> or like, are there any movies where you fart or poop? Yeah. Because that's my favorite. That's the funniest, fat guys farting. <laughs> Do you have any links? And I think, I know that it's a fetish. Yeah. But then they're also like, not aware of how to express that. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I've hung out with girls that do custom videos and the dudes are never like, you know what would be hot? They was like, you know what would be silly? If you were a robot and you stepped on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So it's something endearing about that to me. No, I just think he's a fu- I mean, he's a creep. I wouldn't want him around any of my family members. Maybe not kids. Yeah. But at the that same was, time, I think he's just a fucking moron. That was the that was to me because, you know, everybody knows Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish, too. But it was all based around adult women. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the main well, thing. A girl tried saying. to take Quentin down a number of years ago. I think it was an Indian chick. And she's like, I went on a date with Quentin Tarantino and he took me home and he sucked on my toes and jerked off on the floor and did coke. And everyone's like, what the fuck do you think was going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you not watched his movie? Sounds That's like a gentleman clearly. paid for dinner, too, I bet. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that would be a scene in one of his movies. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just talking about Kill Bill Volume 1 before it comes up. And then, you know. Yeah. Well, when it comes to adults, it's pretty clear that some of this stuff seems like you're basically like kink shaming men. Right. And it's it's like, come on. You know, if you're not going to kink shame women. I mean, you can't kink shame somebody with over six zeros in their do... bank account. If they got six zeros in their bank account, it can't get kink shamed. Well, you can socially yeah. shame them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But even that, I, it's one of those things where, like, I, I think in a lot of different ways, Hollywood's got some dark shit that nobody was really aware of for a long time, like abuse and all that other stuff. Like, even, like, the sex stuff, like, now we can kind of see it. As a child, I didn't because I didn't really have that context. Mostly children were watching those shows. We don't really have the context. No, this is pretty dirty shit. I mean, like, you know, as far as the goo and all that other stuff, like, you know, getting slimed. All right. Look, now that I'm fucking 32, I can look back and think, ah, that seems a little fucking weird. Like, why they do? Why, why they tr- is that weird, though? I mean, I don't know. It's just like kids, like, in fucking these weird situations. Like, they're, they're getting humiliated. They're getting fucked. But do you know, think it's weird, it's weird because you're an adult? Or do you think it's I weird think because you're back, an adult that grew up during the internet developing a whole pornography, you know, uh, culture? So I think it goes, that it goes really, deeper than that. It goes that also that. involves a lot of, you know, goo and sure, chicks' I, faces. I understand that. I understand that. But it's, it goes more that, more so knowing, like, hearing people's like stories of being abused, all this weird shit happening in, in show business and even being in comedy and like, you know, people exchanging favors for things, knowing all the shit that I know now, that what makes it so, so much more weird. And like, yeah, probably knowing about porn, but it's a little bit about that too. But like show business is a lot of just dark, weird shit. And to think they don't exploit kids even then, then 
I'm not man. saying they don't or that they wouldn't right. or that I don't think they do. I'm just saying your perspective in particular, My right? Perspective, does, does the green goo look weird to you? Like, are you 100% sure that it's just because you're an adult? Or is it just because, I'm 100% you know? sure just because of how jaded and how fucking weird they look at Hollywood and all that shit now. Mm-hmm. And if they're, and also like I'm a big hidden meeting guy for what for better or worse, right? You go in some rabbit holes, but I'm just like, if it seemed weird and it seemed like they were humiliating kids or it seemed like there was something semi-sexual, there's probably some creep behind the scenes. Nobody was the wiser. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I think about. Show it. Yeah. business, but in, this is in yeah. and of itself is based on abuse. It is. It's what it, dude. You see that Kevin about Spacey how thing? Bad, talk about how bad actresses have it in the last thirty years. Go to the fucking studio days when there were just a couple studios. You filmed everything on lots. They bought actresses, gave them an apartment, said, you live here. We will cast you in movies. Directors and producers, when they visit town, will be staying with you. You were a sex slave to whatever studio owned you. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, it's built on abuse. It's slowly getting better. And not to say we can't continue to get better and, and strive to be better, but... I don't think it can get better because of the nature of like chasing fame. But but it can. See, just, I think. See, you know? I, I would. This is going to sound very, and I want to sound misogynist. For every you time please, you're please mad, do. every time you're mad at a Harvey Weinstein, mm-hmm. get mad at every chick that willingly sucks somebody's dick like that. Well, but to what get I was going to. But what I was. I've actually because they contributed to that just as but, much as the dude getting his dick. Yeah, sucked. but you refer to them as sex slaves, right? And I know in a way that's true, but maybe in the for 20s some and, and shit like that. But yeah, but I'm saying like these are adult women, right? They this, did he's have, talking about yeah. kids, right? But these are adult women. And I agree with you completely. Like if you saw, did you see that Kevin Spacey documentary? Mm-hmm. Do you see the guys talking about being with him? Yeah, and it's the same kind of thing. And it's funnier for some reason. People can, can it's more palatable when a guy is saying it than you can judge. Mm-hmm. But the women, their psychology, their idea, their relationship with these people in power, right? It's the same shit. Like those guys were like. Oh, you know, Kevin Spacey, you know, I thought he just saw something in me. And so I went with him to this yeah, movie. His dick. His jerk yeah. Yeah. Did you see the one where the guy was like, well, I'm not gay, but, you know, I, I was like, this guy could change my life. So I put his cock in my mouth for like 10 seconds. And then I was like, no. <laughs> he's just <laughs> counting one Mississippi to yeah. Mississippi till he's but famous. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> what, what about that guy? Like, why is he willing to compromise everything he is to himself? Right. For for Kevin Spacey. Right? Who the who is Kevin Spacey? If you want to be an actor though, and you think just sucking some dick will but get Kevin you there. But Kevin Spacey isn't even a producer or a director. What? He's adjacent to those guys. So this guy's willing to sure. compromise his entire, all of his integrity, th- throw it out the window, put it right up his own ass, just so he can have a chance to be friends with Kevin Spacey. And a lot of these women are doing the same thing, but they get a pass because they're women. You know what I mean? There's actually a great quote, and this is going to sound weird. There's a great quote on uh, the entire Me Too thing. And it's from Pam Anderson. Okay. And she said, actually, do you know how many producers tried to get me to go to their hotel rooms when I was uh, starting off? And they go, how many? She goes, all of them. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't go because I know what happens in hotel rooms. And if a guy invited me to his hotel room by himself, I'm an adult with with context and life experience, and I know not to go there because that's a dangerous situation. Exactly. Yeah. It, this is so. And I'm not true. trying to blame anybody, but it's every, not about once that. you're an adult. Yeah. Is also that's a big cutoff. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm cutting adult off pretty late. I'm cutting adult off at off? like twenty five, twenties. That's bullshit mm-hmm. though, because because look, your brain's not done developing yeah, until you're like in your twenties. Yeah. But as a as a chick, right? As a, as, and I've lived my life and I've mm-hmm. lived way through my 20s, right? Um, you already start to know not to go into hotels with people. It already starts at 16, oh, 15, sure, 16. Yeah. You're already kind of like, yeah, what the fuck does this guy want? He's breathing weird, you know? And that's just instincts. You're like, he's breathing weird. He's kind of sweaty. His hands are clammy. It's kind of weird. Could you not look right at me when yeah, you you're saying talking about all three oh, of us? <laughs> 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 just zeroing in. <laughs> just looking at all of you. You guys are really sweaty right now. But um, it's just hot in here. But well, stop talking about when you were 16. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I think I'm going to double down, actually, because oh, I'm enjoying it. But uh, I think and then by the time you're, yeah, like 24, five, that's it. You you know what's happening in life enough. Well, you brought back the the integrity point, too. But like you know, if you're doing entertainment, like, you know, integrity, you know, that's great. But it's also you want to work. So I, I, I'm not saying like that it's right or wrong. But like, you know, if you thought like doing this humiliating thing will get you fucking everything you wanted. 
nine out of 10 people would do that. Look, it's no judgment, you know? but yeah. it is your integrity and you can't deny that. So True. it's not about whether it's good or bad or better or or worse, but it is that. You can't def- you can't redefine what that is well, he also when came you're willing out. when you're willing to be gay when you're not gay just to kind of maybe sort of be friends with Kevin Spacey. He also Spacey. came out to be on the documentary as well. Are you guys are talking about this? Well, yeah. fucking so guess I have story. he's still the same kind of guy. Yeah, cloud chasing. Yeah. So it's kind of it it, it it puts it into perspective, right? And it makes you, like, you're not just going to look at this person as a complete 100% victim, right? We're all people here. We're part of, like, a dynamic. We're all giving and taking. And I've seen people stick to their integrity. It is possible. You can do it. So the fact that I know you can do it changes things. Sure, you can do it and have a day job. And <laughs> yeah, so fucking what? Have a day job, I right? Know, I, I, what's I agree it, what's it worth for you? I do agree with that. And, and it's also, too, I also think documentaries in and of themselves are their own kind of entertainment industry now, too. So, like, yeah. all these stories, oh, you're coming out? Well, like, this happened to me. And, like, you know, and even that, that guy didn't really get abused. He'd get a sexual favor for supposed more favors. That's not necessarily abuse. That's a business transaction, an unsavory one at that. But I don't know what I, the fuck I, that it's, was. I'm not, but uh, I, it's not a victim. You know what I'm saying? That's not being a victim. Like, you were there. He didn't force you. He didn't drug you. You thought this would get you more shit. I don't know. He's, yeah. he's like a victim the way we're all fucking victims to this stupid life we have to live until we fucking die. Well, what if yeah. when he left, he realized Kevin Spacey had made up every story by things that he saw around the room? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, can you give us an example? He just drops a coffee cup yeah. <laughs> in slow motion. So they took us to the bone zone. Yeah. He looks into his mirror like Kaiser Soze gets his dick sucked again, baby. <laughs> No, but that, that's uh, going back to the comic. What's in your butt? What's in your butt? <laughs> uh, go also, on. Kevin Spacey didn't get, get raped by his dad. His dad was also supposedly a Nazi. And it was a Nazi. So that's why, you know. Yeah, there's so many different layers to go through with that. Um, but yeah, going back to the comic, that would be like. Yeah, Slick at one transition. Point, <laughs> at one point, Johnny Frost <laughs> fucking straight up shoots a cop in the head for the Joker. And it's like right. he knows what he's doing in that moment, like, and it would it would be like him going after that and being like, no, no, it, it was it was all him, you know, I didn't want to do it and shit. It's like, no, you you took that moment, you protected the Joker, you, shot you a mentioned cop the Dark Knight in the face. You mentioned the Dark Knight earlier, <laughs> and there's that line like, this is the kind of mind the Joker attracts, which I thought was pretty interesting. Like, you know, basically he's attracting all the like sociopathic, like he's like a beacon for mental illness. Yeah, right. And and also too, if you're a fucking criminal, you're jaded. Like, remember when the Joker came out to the uh, the Joaquin Phoenix one? They're like, oh fucking, everybody's high alert for like you know theater shootings. Right. Because, again, it's just kind of like this weird fucking fantasy and you kind of just get drawn to it. You know? Yeah. People were uh, basically saying that was like the incel movie is like, oh, all the incels are going to come out for the Joker. And the Heath Ledger somebody. one? It was just less no. handsome Taxi Driver. No, the, the Joaquin incel. Phoenix. It one. was it was Taxi oh, okay. Driver meets King of Comedy. Yeah. 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 Well, then Scorsese, wasn't he also like a consultant on the film or something, too? I mean, I think it was a, a love letter to Scorsese. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, okay. I, I went to that. see it. Yeah. I think if I had been born a man, I would have been a school shooter. <laughs> like it's that easy <laughs> why have you tried alternate yeah. universe <laughs> nice, dude. alternate universe Melissa or, yeah I definitely read uh, Catcher in the Rye like, like way too many times and all that kind of stuff what do you so, mean John Lennon's if dead? I had a little bit more testosterone I mean it would have been not good. You'd have got Paul McCartney. Yeah. You'd Instead, I did, the, you know, the, the right thing, which is just uh, have illicit sex, do drugs, get blackout drunk for 10 years, you know, and then figure it out. So and that was good. Nice, dude. Schools are it's, safe because of drugs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, um, with the comic, they have the whole like. Like you were saying, the, all the rogues gallery. Is there anybody you would want to you would want to see that they didn't bring in? Any like villains or or anybody else that you would want to see in that particular Joker comic? Yeah, uh, Mr. Pig. Oh, fuck nice. Uh, uh, was Calendar Man in it? Nope. Calendar, Calendar Man? Man. Oh yeah. And Calendar Mr. Man Pig. Rule, Calendar Man rules. And then I would love to see some of the Adam West villains reemerge as real scary. Yeah. I like. I would love like an Egghead. Okay. Who's like a super genius, but like maybe has a deformity or something. My my favorite was always Solomon Grundy. Oh, so, oh, oh or my yeah. other would be uh, Clayface. Okay, Clayface I think Clayface is, so is the best Batman villain to not have a movie. Yeah, uh, thing yet. They're talking yeah. about putting him in the the second Pattinson one, but I don't know mm-hmm. how they would do that practically. Or like you know, I mean, what what's he's, he's, he's kind of like Sandman, but skin right. Well, he kind of changes yeah. face. Yeah, and he's like, an he's, actor that like had some type of accident or. Well, he would, yeah. well the 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 cartoon version with uh, 
Mark Hamill was that he had this cream, face cream that he would put on for acting, mm -hmm. but it had some kind of toxic uh, additive and to it. And it changes molecular that changed structure. His structure, and then he became capable of, I guess. Yeah, so if they did that with Robert Pattinson, I wouldn't have it be anything supernatural or mutant. It should be like those society guys. I, I think it should be that he's a master of disguise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he should have, like Darkman, he should have no face under it. Oh, okay. So he always, fucking dark yeah. man. Darkman. He Man's always great. has to have something, <laughs> yeah. or it's blank. Nice. Because you can make silicone masks and shit. And imagine he had no face just putting on different masks, changing yeah. his, like a CIA agent kind of deal, like, like examining gate structure and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Because, like, you know, Riddler's basically a domestic terrorist. Yeah. So now you just do like a rogue CIA agent. Like the government gets a CIA agent to take down Batman, that could be Clayface. I think we're one uh, Botox accident in LA away from somebody like that. <laughs> There'll yeah. be a TLC show about yeah. it. The Botox is being really he just bad. Just gets hired lately. by the CIA. The, that, uh, <laughs> The starlight from the boys got heavy, like facial surgery. What's weird though, the more the season goes on, she looks hotter. Like it doesn't look as pronounced. Maybe they start shooting it differently, but like her chin's fucking out there. Dude. She got a fucking. <laughs> yeah, she went heavy with it. There's a girl, or I'm not going to say her name, but she used to come around here a lot and she looks just like her now. And I was laughing my ass off. I sent the side by side images <laughs> to a few friends. Does her name start with a K? No. Oh, okay. In. In? Okay. All right. Just tell me later. <laughs> All righty. Um, as far as other villains, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. I mean, I do. I think Calendar Man's un underappreciated. Yeah, Can for you tell sure. me about Calendar Man? I never heard of Calendar Man. Everything's date based. Okay. So, like, yeah. everything. Like, is murders, like, incidents. So, yeah, there he uh, uh Sean Gunn uh, cameoed as him in uh, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was in uh, the jail. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, basically, he leaves, like, Everything's holiday based, so oh, like okay. his his crimes take years because he plans them out, ba and then all the dates have something to do with each other. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's he plays really well to the detective side of Batman, which I think is what the Pattinson movies want to do. Sure. Is he's more detective than tough guy, mm -hmm. so I think he would fit well in that universe. Okay, yeah, I. I I've always really liked Solomon Grundy, so I, w I would have liked to that whole zombification fucking aspect of it. I, I would have really liked. Does to that see go that. with the uh, the fucking Lazarus pits? There's, is that also in his origin story? Because I know a little bit about Solomon Grundy. He's kind of, but I never like dug deep into like his storyline. Like, no, how, how did it become? I think zombified? the original was just like a zombie from a graveyard. Okay. Um, I think it was a voodoo lady type thing. Solomon Grundy born out. on a Monday. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I like that supernatural side of Batman. Yeah. Um, and I think it, the next, like, Pattinson one, like, I think he needs, so I like the, you said about the detective thing, I, I think Riddler already kind of, like, challenged him to, he needs to be challenged physically or spiritually for the next one, right? Yeah. So that's why, that's one thing I liked about Dark Knight Rises, like, Bane, and I thought the movie was a little bit convoluted at times, but how, he was basically Batman, a mirror image of Batman in a lot of ways. Yeah. Right? And if Joker was still alive, that, that probably would have tied the movie together better. But I like that idea of just like, hey, he has to fight himself, then he has to fight like a, a, the devil version of himself, then he has to fight himself again. So Yeah. Uh, have you have you read the Sandman comics or either of y'all read the Sandman comics? I'm vaguely familiar. Yeah. I, I liked in the Dark Knight Metal or uh yeah, Dark Knight's Metal. In it, right? Constantine yeah. comes right. in and uh Batman meets Sandman. Uh wait, which one? Which issue? Or which volume? It's it's one of the it's like when shit keeps going like to shit and they they call in him as a heavy hitter. I think like, yeah, you know. he he runs in the Sandman and, and this is in the Sandman comics though or the Batman not in comics? the Batman oh, comic, oh, the okay. Dark uh, Dark uh, Knights Metal. Uh, and I wanted them to go a little bit deeper with that either in the Sandman comics or later in Batman comics. Fucking like have them do some shit because it is DC Vertigo technically. Right. Yeah. So that would I'm waiting for that. That's gonna be. If they ever do that, that would be fucking fire. Yeah, the number one origin story I would like depicted correctly on film is Doomsday. Yeah. Yep. So Doomsday is my favorite origin story. And the fact that they just made him a clone of Zod, I absolutely fucking hate it. Are yep. you familiar with the Doomsday? Doomsday is the guy that killed Superman, right? Yes. Right. That's yeah. all I know. I remember the poster. My so basically, when what happened when they killed Superman, for a few weeks, just this thing lands on Earth on an asteroid. And he's got a spacesuit on, and one of his arms is tied behind his back. And he, with one arm, fucks up the Justice League. <laughs> he gets the other arm freed, sees, uh, super, and all he knows is he has to kill Superman. Him okay. and Superman fight to the death. Uh, Superman eventually, you know, comes back. Yeah. Uh, after there's the reign of the Superman. But then after that, Doomsday reappears. Because so they sent him on a rock. Basically, they tied his body to a rock, 
covered in steel cable. Because he's so dangerous? Into space. Yeah. Okay. And then you see his eyes open in space. So then they later revisit. He comes back to Earth and you find out what Doomsday's story was, which it, a planet like Krypton becomes uninhabitable. All the scientists go underground and they decide they're going to figure out a way to combat this uninhabitable. So it's literally like crazy hot, no air, and there's giant monsters. It's Texas. That destroy. Yeah, yeah. There's like sandworms, crazy No, shit. Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they make uh, an entity that repairs itself after it dies and fixes whatever killed it. So, yeah, it it adapts to every it, failure. Yeah, Everything adapts. that kills it, when it comes back to life, it fixes that problem. Mm -hmm. So they put it out on the surface of the planet and the elements kill it in three seconds. They scoop it back up bring it in it evolves to now be able to survive that mm -hmm. now it lives for 10 seconds something kills it 20 seconds now it can walk around one of the monsters kills it then you know yeah so the doomsday and it remembers every time it died <laughs> right yeah so doomsday has died hundreds of thousands of times and every time he comes back he fixes it so all those like bone claws those are all wounds he's had that killed him yeah, yeah. And it grew bone over it so that it couldn't kill him again. Then. So that's mm -hmm. why he's got it around his neck so he can't be decapitated. He's got it there so he can't get it shit cut off. Mm -hmm. So then he wakes up and now he's stronger than he was because now he can beat Superman. Right. Really? And it's really good. Yeah, well, that's really you, good. As you know, you it, I think they rushed Doomsday because they were trying to get to Darkseid. And I think Doomsday is just as a threat as Darkseid is. I yeah, think, I think had they done... It felt like they used yeah. Doomsday as a means to an end. Exactly. As opposed to, like, the big bad he could have been. He was the tie together the first Super Bowl film and just put a bow on the third act. Like, let's get Superman dead in this first setup for the Justice League. Yeah. And gets the movie. I so, feel like in the Justice League, in that Justice League mu movie, the, the villain Wraith, I think they were trying to, like, make a Doomsday type character yeah. with that. And I'm like, no, y'all should have just used Doomsday. Yeah. So once he kills Superman, um, what does he he gets killed, get gotten rid of somehow or he just leaves or when what Superman happens? and Dooms they fight the first time <laughs> they fight to the death they each kill each other with the oh, last they kill each punch. Other. oh it's like a KO yeah oh, they, I thought it's he a just double kills KO. Superman yeah. it's a double KO oh so then when he dies they tie him to a rock okay and put him into space because okay. they don't know what to do with it and his eyes open in space and his eyes open in space and eventually he finds his way back there now Superman comes back I I don't I remember a friend telling me about this years ago but something happened where he ends up being like mutated because he's just been in space for decades or something like that and there's all these other no, Superman he, he, he's basically they take the body and bring it to the Fortress of Solitude. So he's not dead as much as he's, like, in I, stasis. Stasis, yeah. yeah. Like a coma kind yeah. of thing. Okay. And so they, they bring him back to hell there. During that, you get the four Supermen, and it's Steel, who's just, like, a fan, Superboy, who's his clone, the Eradicator, who's supposedly from Krypton, and then Cyborg <laughs> Superman, who looks like Superman, but all the wounds from Dooms, they have been replaced by robot parts. Hmm. Okay. Hell yeah. But they're coming from different dimensions, right? Some of them? No, or they're all, they all show up at the same time. Oh, okay, I got you. And then you, so Steel's really Steel, Superman, Superboy is really his clone that they've been working on. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> Cyborg was one person and Eradicator was an old Superman villain Okay. who took on the Superman persona. Okay. Uh, and they have to kill the other. Yeah, they have to kill Cyborg, and they have to kill Eradicator. Okay, because they're actually evil. Oh, okay. Damn. All right. Yeah, it gets a little. I'm starting to feel like I'm in high school again. This is exactly the DC what and I Marvel. Would... I, I, that's one thing I, I I wish they wouldn't have done was like retconned and and done like all the multiple universes and stuff. At that point, it just gets. Well, it's it's a never ending uh, MacGuffin. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a de ex Deus ex machina. It's over and over and over again. Yeah. But and I, and I like multiple multiple multiverse shit like that. But it's like if the characters like you know you just have a carbon copy and another and oh we we killed Superman in this universe. Let's just get the same exact. You still one have from, to have some rules. There, you have some to set some fucking rules yeah. and ramifications. People, if there's no stakes, what am I watching this yeah, for? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. It's uh with whenever somebody dies, sometimes people just die and they don't come back. And like you have to kind of have that as 
uh, still in the back of people's mind, like, oh, hey, if Superman dies here, there's a chance they won't go to another universe and get another Superman or some shit. You know? I remember they really milked that, too, because they made so much merch around the fact that Superman was dead. They, that was like the they biggest selling had, comic of all time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, but it's all it's the whole they had a whole term, they had a poster know? with like everybody from that universe just mm-hmm. around a coffin, like mm-hmm. a Superman coffin. I but, remember that. But it, it, I think also well, at that time too, it, people thought and it was Superman, bullshit. Well, Superman was stale, I and mean, he was just stale. It's like what the fuck's what? There's no ramifications. Like what yeah. do you mean? I, they're just filling all these fucking ways to put him in a circle. But if he dies, well, I think that that was kind of the premise behind One Punch Man. It was just making fun of that dynamic of bit. somebody mm-hmm. who's so powerful that it's like. Do you remember not when Superman became pure energy? <laughs> Whenever he went into the sun, he became was a that hippie? gold Superman. No, he became blue. Oh, okay, he was neon blue and white, and he had all new powers. Huh? It was like I want to say two thousands. They tried to just change Superman to a different guy, and they did it for a few weeks. And they're like, "All right, we're gonna start another series that's other Superman again." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they, we are. It, yeah. it was weird. But yeah, he was like idea. he was neon blue. He looks like Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, he looks like Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I was thinking. That's... And he like is energy and can like that's... zap around. Because even, shit even Doctor Manhattan, he was cool too. Because he's like, you know, what? I'm just sick of this planet. I'm gonna go to another place. That sounds that like was something cool. a girl would come up with. Like, what if Superman was just energy? What if he was like a crystal? Yeah, <laughs> what if he was just like a crystal. No, yeah. Whenever they did DC the New Fifty Two, that it was just a whole retcon of the entire universe. I'm like, all right, I'm kind of good. At, like, I was huge. I had all the Swamp Thing comics, all the Green Arrow comics, all the Sandman comics, like all that shit, all the old school shit. And then they did the New Fifty Two, re re. Doing all the right, it's like a big bang, a fresh start, yeah, some more shit, and then it's but it's also a rehashing of familiar stories as well, exactly. So. Just like, oh, hey, we're gonna do all the origin stories again, but just a little different, you know. Uh, Oliver Queen wasn't, uh, didn't end up shipwrecked on an island, he was partying out on a fucking oil rig and it gets attacked by a villain, and then he go, ends up on an island. It's like, okay, tiny little shifts like that don't really matter. And then they just it, it just got wild because then they're like, OK, well, this is an alternate universe and the old universe is still there. And it well, just di- got di- so different convoluted. versions of the character. I always feel like should be different periods of their life, which is why Frank Miller's Dark Knight I like so much. Right. Yeah. See, like, hey, this is Batman, the one you know and love. But this is after years of abuse, knowing like the failures of his techniques. Like imagine like a 3000 year old Superman if, they, if he lives that long and like the Earth's dead and he just has to like kind of live there. Like another period of their life is much more interesting than just a retconning of the character. Right. It's that way you don't feel as like the reader that you felt like you wasted this time investing in all these stories, knowing all the little nuances of their personality. Now it's built into like, you know, this this fucking different version of them. You know? That doom guy looks pretty hot. I got to say, <laughs> with all the bones and shit. Oh, another one I want to see. Uh, <laughs> talk about uh, regenerative villains. Lobo. I would Lobo's. love to see well, it. Lobo's an antihero, I thought. Isn't it? Kind of an antihero, but he comes in as a as a uh, wanting to kill Superman. Oh, dude, he fucks Superman up. In, yeah. Um, yeah. Lobo, Lobo choose your own adventure. He beats Superman in the mecha suit. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean beats the shit out of him. <laughs> it's a one it's a squash match. How many times okay. has Superman gotten the shit beat out of him? A lot. Total. Oh yeah. Like how many times would you say? A more lot. Than, more than ten? Yeah. Less than twenty. Every superhero 20? gets the shit kicked out of him until the pay per view match. Yeah. 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 They they whenever they introduce a villain, a new villain you to make a superhero. Strong. You got it. You have to have the villain kind of win in the beginning to have the comeback. So it's most, especially Superman villains, they have to be like up there in power. They come yeah, in, they fucking yeah. beat the shit out of them, and then hold the planet hostage or some shit. And then Superman has to figure out some new way to beat the, his villain. Yeah, I would love mm-hmm. a Lobo. Depending on the if I think it could work in James Gunn Superman universe. Mr. Mixelplick. Oh. Who I think f- would be really cool. Who the fuck is that? He's like, uh, what's the what's the dude from um, Flintstones? The little... Mr. Uh, Kazoo. Mr. Kazoo? Uh-huh. Yeah. He's like that. He's an imp, basically. Like, like a, de- a little demon. <laughs> he's an demon. international okay. god, cool. right? Yeah. But he's like, um, he's magic. Okay. And the only way to get rid of him is by saying his name backwards, but people don't know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I would love to see him... And then if we're leaving DC, I would like a good carnage. Yeah. Yeah. Be I actually funny. think Topher Grace would have been a better carnage than Venom. I agree with that. Yeah. Venom, he kind of sucked as Venom. Yeah. I think I would love to see a good actor. Not like Woody Harrelson as carnage. I've already seen him play a serial killer yeah. in a much better movie. Who would make a good Venom? Or, or Brock Lesnar. 
Think oh, so? dude, that'd be perfect. Because ha- don't have him speak. I don't yeah. want to f- have him take f- f- pictures and be mad at fucking Peter Parker. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, to be honest, I think Arcade, uh, if they do more X-Men movies, I would love to see Arcade. Yeah? Yeah, I, I've always really enjoyed him. Nice. They, yeah, I don't know what they're doing with the X-Men shit right now. That, well, so that's far, so Hugh far- Jackman did that one weird one. Yeah. His, like... That when he self produced the last Wolverine, Logan. Oh no, Logan. That, Logan. Ex- yeah. yeah, that was like the last really, one I saw. Yeah, that was old Logan. That that was. It was basically a neutered version, and it was good. I really liked it. Yeah. yeah. But it was a neutered version of Old Man Logan. Yeah. yeah. Which is awesome because it has not just X Men in it. So in Old Man Logan, it's he's uh, all the X Men are dead. You find out why later. He's got Xavier, and he's got to go deliver something across the country. But the bit is uh, Hulk is a bad guy and he impregnated She-Hulk. But even though she because she's his cousin, all the kids are inbred (laughs) and they each run a different territory of America. And then Hawkeye is helping Wolverine and he's blind. Okay. Uh, But you see all other like what has happened to the Marvel Universe in this kind of post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. And they couldn't put all those people in Logan because they were Marvel characters. I mean, the Hulks are already kind of retarded. I ca- they can't afford to be inbred. How no, can those kids do anything? They're dangerous. Yeah. I had a neighbor that was like two generations of first cousins inbred, and they did not do much. They could not run shit. Like, one of them thought he was Jesus, and then the other one... Uh, he had high hopes. That's good. Yeah. Well, have then he thought it was a piece the, of cheese. Have you ever seen the Whitaker family? <laughs> the, of yeah. course. I love the Whitaker family. Yeah, yeah. that is wild. The dude who just barks literally Ray, can only his name's bark. Ray. Yeah, yeah, Ray. I love, I, I, yeah. They're, they're, sometimes they're hard to watch, but I don't know. I like that you, you like them. They're really likable. Have you, when was the first time you saw that video? Uh, so my one of my favorite movies is The Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. Fuck yeah. I was meant to and watch somebody that. showed the Whitakers to me after. They live in the same town. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, that's all one. That's all Appalachia. one. Yeah. Well, it's uh, Boone County, West Virginia. We all hang out with Hank the Third. Hell yeah. yeah, dude. <laughs> Once I watched that, I just, oh man, I just started watching so much Soft White Underbelly. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was eye The one with Merle it's Allen's great. really good. Yeah. The one with the, the clown who's uh, 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 OCD. OCD yeah. is really good. Uh huh. I, I love those. Yeah. I watch those a lot. And there's uh, one of my favorite ones was Frenchie. This is just like French lady who just was a banker who liked to smoke weed. Uh, but she was a hot little French lady. And suddenly people started propositioning her for sex and shit like that. And <laughs> And she just had no qualms, completely open, really a delight. You know, she just ended up doing all the sex, all the fucking. And and it's just, she just ended up working for Playboy, being um, like a call girl, an escort. And it was just like her whole life. She was just just, just kind of whoring and having a great time. And just people giving her money and drugs. And her, every one of her stories ends like, and then they fucked shit out of me and I came and it was fucking amazing. You know, she's just like smoking a cigarette the whole time. And it was like four hours of that. And I managed to watch it because it was just so good. The one that's really good for me is the, the multi-part with the guy who gets off heroin. Which one? The one that's like, oh, I'm a functional heroin addict, the and then he's like, no, addict. I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The functional heroin addict. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy was interesting. Uh huh. Um, Function- that seems like being functional with narcolepsy, right? It's not the same kind of deal. Yeah, kind of. But for sure, the uh, I, there's probably a, a heroin or drug analogy with the uh, Johnny Frost character in this comic because, like, you know, he's just following along, Joker. Um, if we pull up the last or second to last slide, he's just following along Joker the entire time. Yeah. And uh, just going through this crazy shit, two fucking massacres and all this shit. And then and he rapes his wife and he rapes his wife. And then uh, and they kill a random ass couple in a in a hotel room. Uh, but yeah, he he goes with and then Batman comes up and Joker just straight up fucking shoots him in the jaw to get away from Batman. Uh, go back. Uh, is it go yeah, the, that one. Bam. Just full on, just to get away from Batman, as a, as a shield tries to shoot Batman through his jaw. And, like, yeah, it, it, that could definitely be a, a analogy for, like, a heroin addiction just going wrong and shit. You know, you're on a high for a really long time, and then See, I think, I think it comes Joker's crashing, probably you know? more of an upper analogy. More uppers than heroin. Probably might be meth because his jaw's gone, took away his teeth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'd, I'd say uppers kids. Also, he's up for three days with the Joker. Yeah. 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 True. It's a three day fucking meth binge with a guy who just won't stop talking. Like, where are we stopping? It's like collateral. Are we collateral? 
<laughs> that's, that's kind of what I was thinking when he, when he told me about the comic. It sounds like, you know, what if it's Jamie Foxx just driving the Joker around? Yeah. Right? Oh, you're kind of sick. But um, it's definitely uppers. Yeah. But yeah, I think we got to end it here. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Um, that's a good run, dude. This was fun as fuck. I'm so happy we had y'all on. Thank, Thank you so much for having me, dude. Yeah, thanks for doing it. Thank you. Um, anything y'all want to plug? Oh, shit. Uh, I, I'm on the Late Night Dirty Show at Secret Group in Houston. You can follow me at Coors Light Poppy 713. Always happy to be one of the and friends for Amico. And we're doing a show tonight, I believe, here at Creek. Uh, yeah. you, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking barking for a show that's happening in six hours. But, you know, I'm always promoting, dude. You know? <laughs> but anyway, I really appreciate you guys having me on. And uh, thanks for letting me be here. Dude. Of course. Yeah. Zach? Instagram, Zach is not funny. Check out my podcasts. Zach Amico's Midnight Spook Show and The Real Ass Podcast, both, both on the Gas Digital Network. And yeah, follow me for my dates and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Melissa. Melissa Diaz, number four, letter U on Instagram. That's it. Hell yeah. Cool. And I am, my name is Mud9210 on Instagram. Um, watch all of our episodes of The Turtle Reads on the Creek and Cave Studio YouTube. And all the other shows we have on there are awesome, funny. Uh, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Hell yeah.